Today I'm going to replace Fiesta 8 front brake pads and discs. This is my son's Fiesta 1.5 EcoBoost ST, but all the Fiestas are the same from 2017 model year onwards. Raise the front of the car, support on axle stands, handbrake firmly on and chock one of the rear wheels. Turn the steering wheel towards the side that you're working on to give yourself a little more access. With a 10mm spanner or socket, release the brake hose from the suspension leg. Put the screw back in a couple of turns to keep it safe. Clamp the brake hose. Remove the dust covers from the bleed nipple and from the slide pin covers. And with a flat screwdriver, lift the uh, retaining spring out of the caliper. Put a 10mm spanner on your bleed nipple and a bleed hose down into a container and open the bleed nipple about half a turn. With a flat screwdriver get your flat end on the edge of the brake pad not the piston and using this edge of the brake caliper very gently lever the brake pad back just slightly. It should go back fairly easy once you've opened up a gap to the disc you should be able to put your screwdriver in there and push back using the pad. Doesn't matter if we scratch the pads a little bit we're not going to be reusing them. Same goes with the discs in this instance, but if you were just doing the pads, obviously be careful of the discs. Push the piston most of the way back in. The, the fluid will go through the tube and into your container. Don't leave the bleed nipple closed and just push the fluid back up towards the uh, master cylinder. There was a time when ABS systems could be wrecked by pumping fluid backwards through them. I think those days are long gone, but it's best practice to get rid of the fluid that's been at this end and then top up the master cylinder with fresh once we've finished. That way, whenever you change the pads, you're always renewing some of the fluid. Once you've got the piston all the way back in, close your bleed nipple, just tighten it down hand tight and you can remove your hose. Either with a seven millimeter hex key or even better, a seven millimeter hex on a ratchet. Undo both slide pins starting with the bottom one. Pull the caliper a little towards the outside to push the slide pins through their rubbers, back in towards the inside, and the caliper should then lift straight off. Pull the inner brake pad spring out of the piston and remove. The outer pad might just need a little persuasion to help it out. If Ford used wheel bolts instead of studs, you wouldn't have to do this, but with a 15 millimeter socket on a breaker bar, Loosen the carrier bolts. So once the carrier is loose, you can remove them the rest of the way with a standard half inch ratchet. And again, another black mark for Ford. With a half inch ratchet, I can't get on the upper bolt thanks to the uh, protrusion of the uh, suspension leg bolt to the hub carrier. So I'm having to use my uh, much smaller 3 8 socket. You could probably use a uh, half inch with a universal drive. Take both bolts out all the way. If you haven't got a slim socket that you can get in there with, you could always remove this hub carrier bolt and fit it the other way about. Or just undo it till the nut comes to the end and knock it through to get it out of your way temporarily. And lift the carrier away. Um, with a decent size uh, hammer or mallet, turning the wheel a quarter turn at a time, Loosen the disc so you can lift it off. And with the disc off, it's now very, very important to thoroughly clean the mating face so that the disc can sit square on the hub. Before you do though, give it a very quick once over with some brake cleaner and an old toothbrush or nylon brush and get rid of any grease that's on here. And while you're at it, give the studs a good clean down, get any dirt and grease out of the threads. Use a variety of brush shapes to get the flange as clean as you can. Pads run in the carriers, so give the carriers a good clean where the pads run as well. And just give the rest of the carrier a once over to get the worst of the dust off. And give it a wash down with a bit of brake cleaner. Don't blow the dust away, you don't want to go breathing it in. Make sure the mating face where it mounts is also clean. Again, wash the dust off with some brake cleaner. With a nylon brush, just brush the worst of the dust off the caliper itself. The only contact the pads have with the caliper is the, are those two little bits there. Clean with some thousand grit. Remove the slide pins, give them a clean down with some brake cleaner. Allow that to dry 
and give them a good polish up with some 1000 or 1200 grit wash down. With a suitable nylon brush and some brake cleaner, give the inside of the slide pin rubbers clean, get rid of any grease and cack that's in there, allow the brake cleaner to run off the caliper and then let it dry. Do not use copper grease for this, don't put copper grease anywhere near your brakes. Use some Ceratex from Mintex, uh, there are other pro suitable products but this is what I choose to use. Squeeze a little into the uh, rubber housing and put your slide pin back in making sure it runs freely, make sure it turns as well as slides. Just put a tiny smidge of Ceratec on these running surfaces and return your caliper to hang back up on the spring for the time being. Spread a little bit of Ceratec on the mating face for the disc and also around this mating flange. Handle your new disc with clean hands or clean gloves on. Give the mating face a quick wash down with brake cleaner just to make sure that there's no dust that could interfere with the uh, true running. Allow it to dry and slot the disc over the studs. Making sure to get the carrier the right way around, return it to position. On this one it says Famoco, the right way up on the top here. And tighten the bolts down good and tight, at least 100 Newton meters if you've got a torque wrench. I like to use a small flat paintbrush for this, but apply some Ceratec to the running surfaces of the pads, being very careful not to get any on the uh, disc, but you'll want to get it on the outsides, away from the disc anyway, because that's where the running surfaces will start. Don't go mad with it, just a thin layer. You could put it on the pads if you prefer. Apply a little Ceratec to the piston and to the other side of the caliper that pulls on the uh, outer pad. Being careful not to touch the uh, friction surface, put the inner pad in first and slot the outer pad into position. Note that the outer pad has two little pips that help it to uh, go in square. Make sure that the pad slots on. The outer pad doesn't actually slide, it's the inner pad that does the sliding as the uh, pads wear and the caliper pulls across. Push the slide pins back so that the end of the threads are level with the rubber stoppers and making sure that you have not got the hose twisted, bring the caliper back into place and screw the uh, caliper pins back in. I suggest doing the top one first. Give the slide pins about 30 Newton meters. Put the slide pin covers back on along with the bleed nipple dust cap. Apply some Ceratec to the holes where the spring goes. You will find in later life as the car gets older that the caliper corrodes and traps the spring in there and you then end up having to buy a new caliper. This is good preventative maintenance now. Make sure that you get the spring in the correct orientation. Now the way I do this is put the top leg in first, push that behind this face here, put the bottom leg in and then if you're looking you can do it by hand pull this spring end behind this face here. Give the spring ends a little knock just to make sure that they're pushed fully home. Vitally important, don't forget to remove your brake hose clamp. You won't have any braking if you don't. And secure the brake hose bracket back into place, hand tight. Don't worry about the disc seeming to be a bit loose at this stage. Four discs don't have a uh, retaining screw like a lot of other makes do. When the wheel goes on and the wheel nuts go on, that'll, hold, that'll pull the disc into place. Make sure to pump your brake pedal a couple of times to make sure that the pads are contacting the disc and you're ready to go.